Hello and welcome to Windows Forensics here at Pentester Academy. In this video, we're going to talk about automating use of Netcat for live response. In particular, we're going to start out talking about automating the server side, the side of this conversation on your forensics workstation. So here I have a couple of scripts. And these are bash scripts. And of course, bash scripts all start with their shebang bin bash to make sure that you're running bash. I define a usage function that tells you how to do this. And this one is called start case. It expects a case number. I check and see, did you in fact give me one argument? If you didn't you give me less than the one argument, I'm going to give you the usage back. Otherwise, I echo out starting case and then use the case name which you gave me. If there is no directory that has the name of this case, that's what I'm testing here. I'm saying if not a directory by this name exists, then make it. And this is how I close an if statement in a shell script. So some of you, especially if you're primarily working with Windows, may not be familiar with this method. Now I create a listener and you'll notice here I enclose some commands and backticks and follow them with an ampersand. And what this does is it runs my command in the background. If I look at the command it says nc netcat. It uses this keep alive flag that we talked about last time. It's listening on port 4444. Everything it receives, it appends, that's what the double greater than does, to a file in the directory that's the same as my case name into a file called log.txt. What this allows me to do is to have an ongoing log of the results from commands that I run on my subject system. Once this is ready, I go ahead and echo that I started a log listener for this case on this date and time. So this is a little trick in shell scripting. If I take a command such as date and I enclose it in parentheses that follow a dollar sign, the command is executed and the results are substituted in to whatever else I'm doing. So in this case, I'm echoing out some stuff and I will have the date and time inserted. This is all piped to port 4444 on the local host, which causes this to be appended to my log. Then I will start another script for my file listener. The file listener waits for the client to send a file name on a certain port. And as soon as that happens, it will create a listener on another port to receive the data for a file. So here, once again, I call start file listener sh and I give it the case name and I start it in the background. So that's my start case script. If we have a look at the start file listener script, it of course starts with shebang bin bash has a usage statement and it will check to see if you specified a case name. If not, it will give you a usage statement. Now this guy has an infinite loop. So while true, do starts the loop, done ends the loop. The first thing it's going to do you say the file name is equal to, and once again here we're using our little trick. I have the command nc l create a listener on port 5555. The results for this command are used to create a variable called file name. Now this will block and wait for a line to be sent. So once a line has been sent that contains the file name, this will exit. And then we will drop to the next line. On the next line, we create a new listener on the port 5556. Any information received on this port is redirected to a file 
in the case directory and it's given a name that is the result of running this command. So what is this command? This command base name will give me just the file name. It will strip off all of the path information. So I might have sent a file from the Etsy directory. It will strip that off. If it was from someone's home directory, it will strip off that path information as well. So it will retain just the file name inside of my case directory. I will also have a log, and we'll see this in a future video, that tells me exactly where this used to be. Notice that here again, I have not used the dash K option. I am not going to keep this alive. So, as soon as I'm done receiving my file, this line exits, and I go back here into my infinite loop. And this process continues. When does it stop? Well, it stops once I run close case. Close case simply says I'm going to shut down all of the listeners. And once again, I use my trick where I run the date command. I pipe this information to port 4444 on my local host. And then I use the kill all utility to kill start case. I kill any start file listener processes. And then finally, I kill any netcat processes. And the reason for this last line is sometimes you'll have some stragglers out there. Depending on exactly when you killed these other two scripts, you might have a couple of netcat processes just kind of hanging out there. So there you have it. There's the forensics workstation side of some automation that will allow you to receive pretty much anything. So you can run any command and have its output there. If you have some suspicious files that you want to look at, you can easily use the system to transfer them to your forensics workstation where you can more carefully and safely examine them. Well, that's all for this video. As always, if you're enjoying these videos here at Pentester Academy, please tell a friend. We'll see you soon.